As we move ahead with technology, the election is moving the Republican Party. Uh, didn't move it backwards, though. Joining us now to talk about what happens next for the GOP, former presidential candidate and Texas representative Ron Paul. He's include Texas this morning. Congressman Paul, it's always good to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Where do you think this country is going to be headed, let me ask you, first of all, under an Obama presidency? Well, the same way it's been going now for the last eight years, because I don't think its policies are different. Uh, although the perceptions were different, and I think one thing that we could claim a little bit of victory for is that Obama was perceived as the peace candidate. He wanted to, uh, he was seen as wanting to get the troops out of Iraq. I don't think that's going to really happen, but at least that was the perception. And that's actually the way Bush uh, won in, in the year 2000. He was complaining about uh, Clinton's wars, and the Republicans were opposed to the war, but they lost that position uh, after they got in office. So I, I think that uh, the Republicans have a long way to go. They lost a lot of credibility, and they're going to have to rebuild it but they're going to have to do a heck of a lot better than they did when they're in, in charge. And, yeah. and that's, a, that's the whole problem. When they're in charge, they do a lousy job. Hey, well, let me ask you this question. Where does the Republican Party find itself this morning? Well, I think it's in, in terrible shape. And uh, it's going to take a long time. It took 40 years to get the Democrats out of power, you know, once before. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it should take that long if they restate their principles, and, and they probably will do a better job. But uh, right now, they're in very, very bad shape because they've lost their way. But they have to not just talk about the deficits. I think they have to understand foreign policy and personal liberties because they, they talk that way. They say, oh, yes, we're for personal freedom, and, and we're for uh, not going into these n and, needless and, and, wars. And then and they all. pass the Patriot Act and go into Iraq, right? Yeah, they do exactly opposite of what, what they say and what they want on. And over those 20 years from Goldwater on up in order to get in, they said one thing. Then they went and said, oh, the whole thing is getting power and maintaining power. So they started to act like Democrats, thinking, well, we're going to take away some of that Democratic support and we're going to have more power than ever before. And, and lo and behold, they lost all credibility. I think when the dust settles, we're going to find out that uh, one of the reasons this, can, uh, this campaign was so bad for Republicans I'll bet you a lot of Republicans just stayed at home because right now I don't see that a tremendous number of young people turned out to vote for Obama, even though that's the perception. I think the Republicans just got turned off because uh, we didn't do the job that we were supposed to do. It's building credibility. It's mm -hmm. trusting people and doing what we say. That's what we need, and that's what we didn't have these last eight years. Congressman, there's this uh, secret uh, conservative conclave that's going on today somewhere out in the hills of Virginia. A lot of uh, party elders are getting together to try to figure out how to build a grassroots movement in the style of the, the Reagan grassroots movement, what would you suggest they do? If you were at that meeting, what would you be saying? Well, it's interesting. I didn't get invited. Uh, maybe <laughs> I could have had some suggestions. We, we did attract a lot of young people. I would emphasize the importance of talking to young people. And they are open to the message of individual liberty, to self-reliance, taking care of themselves, getting rid of the nanny state. But, of course, they're very open to personal liberties. And also, they don't like these perpetual wars like nobody likes them. But they're not going to talk about there. They're not going to talk about the Patriot Act and mm -hmm. repeal the Patriot Act. They're not going to talk about a different foreign policy. And uh, they're going to talk about balancing the budget once again. But how can you balance the budgets on the back of sick people here at home on medical care? you got to balance the budget by stopping all this ugly spending overseas that is so perpetual and is, it's brought us to our knees financially. Con you can't solve the financial crisis without dealing with foreign policy. Congressman, your Liberty PAC supported 22 candidates in this election. Seven of them were elected. Two of the races are still too close to call. That's, that's less than a 50 percent performance rate. You happy with the, uh, with the outcome? I would say that's pretty good in this, in this day and age, especially since we're not, you know, the status quo. We're asking for our revolutionary changes. We actually want these guys to believe in the Constitution. Now, that's revolutionary. So I would say we're doing pretty darn well. And uh, we took some risky uh, support for some, pay, some of the uh, uh, candidates. And I think they're going to be paying attention, especially since the party leadership has lost credibility. So maybe, maybe the Constitution still does have its merits. Well, Congressman, good to have you back in the Congress. Looking forward to the 111th Congress, and uh, we'll keep following you to see what you get done. Thanks for joining us this morning.